you know, it's been a joy. And I just can't describe to you really how I feel about it. Because it's so amazing to me that when I come out and I read these and share them, and I know Jesus is here, and that together, you know, we're participating in our devotions, our devotionals. That it's like I come to the last one, and I, I feel this, like, awesome longing for more. You know, I mean, it's like, ah, oh, I just can't get enough. You know, I want, I want it to go on. You know, it's like... If I had a stack of 20, you know, devotionals to share and to talk about God and share Jesus and to feel his presence here and to be able to communicate that and to participate with you in it, what amazing, you know, days and nights would be, you know, and I would, uh, I would do it, you know, because I'm that kind of a crazy person. But, you know, I do, I, I, like I have Spurgeon now and it's like the last one I'm recording today and. I'm just so much like, oh, it's so good, you know, I mean, it's just so good to keep going, and, you know, you just want to, you don't want it to end, you know, and, oh, there have been days, even this week when my back was out, that, you know, it was a challenge, but every time that, that as soon as God wanted to share something, it was like, oh, it was so wonderful, it was like, oh, Lord, let's keep going, you know, can we, can we make this last an eternity? And that, I think, is what you and I can discover, you know, each day that we share these emotionals is it should be like that when you sit down to, say, read your Bible or to study or even go to church or whatever it may be. You just don't want it to end. You want it to, I mean, when I go to church, I sit in the pew long after everybody's gone, you know, because I don't want it to end. I'm still blessed. <laughs> but... As we live in time and as we have space, sharing from Spurgeon and hearing what God may speak to both of us, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is... Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> I was going to say, that sure sounded familiar. And it is. It's the wrong day. Get thee up into a high mountain. Oh, don't it figure... I'm blessed, and they're going to tell me about a good one. Get thee up into a high mountain, Isaiah, from Isaiah. Our knowledge of Christ is somewhat like climbing one of our Welsh mountains, or in your area, a high mountain. When you are at the base, you see but little. The mountain itself appears to be but one half as high as it really is. Confined in a little valley, you discover scarcely anything but the rippling brooks as they descend into the stream at the foot of the mountain. But you climb the first rising knoll, and the valley lengthens and widens beneath your feet. You go higher. You see the country for four or five miles around, and you are delighted with the opening up and the widening ability to see even farther. You mount up still, and the scene changes again. It enlarges. Till at last, when you're on the summit, and you look to the east, to the west, to the north and the south, you see almost all of England lying before you. Or if you were standing on Mount Rainier and you looked around Washington, or you were standing in Denali on the top and you could see <laughs> almost all of Alaska. I'm sure from Denali's top you could see Russia. <laughs> but the point is obvious that you can see far and wide. Yonder is a forest at some distant county, perhaps 200 miles away. And here you see the sea, and there a shining river, and smoking chimneys of a manufacturing town, or the mass of ships that are in the busy port. All these things please and delight you, and you say, You know, I never would have imagined that I could see so much from this high up. Now the Christian life is of the same order. It's the same way. When we first believe in Jesus, we see but little of him. The higher we climb, the more we discover of his beauties and how much more is revealed to us. But who has ever gained the summit? Who has known all the heights and depths of the love of Christ, which passes all understanding and knowledge? Paul, when grown old, sitting gray-haired, shivering in a dungeon in Rome, could say with greater emphasis than we can, I know whom I have believed. For each experience had been like the climbing of a hill. 
Each trial and tribulation had been like ascending another summit. And in his death, it seemed like gaining the top of the mountain from which he could see the whole of the faithfulness and love of him to whom he had committed his soul. Friend, get you up. Get out of your doldrums. Get into a high mountain and discover all that God is. You know, I like to say, never be settled for what you think you know, because there's so much more you could know. Never settle for what you think you already have, because there's so much more that you could get. And when you do settle, settle for nothing less than when you walk into heaven and be there in person. Because if John could do it from the Patmos Island, then why can't you? And that's my question I ask God daily. If Enoch could walk with God and then be taken into heaven because he was no more, if John himself could be teleported or transported or taken unto the day of salvation that he would be in heaven, if Paul could say with confidence that a man he did not know, whether in the body or in the flesh, that he knew not whence, but he went to heaven and ascended into the highest, then why can't we? You see, we can. The only thing that's stopping us is do we want to. And so Spurgeon tells us, go up higher. Get alone with God. Have it out. Duke it out. Wrestle with God like Jacob. Wrestle with those things that are confining you or defining you. Find and desire and, des desire and delight in seeking Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> because it happened to me, when you least expect it, not only will God speak to you, but he'll speak to you in an audible voice. Why God chose me and wants me to say that, I don't know. But he did. I don't think, uh, at the time, believe me, <laughs> nothing special about me. <laughs> Still nothing special about me. Hasn't gotten much better. <laughs> but I can tell you this. Never doubt what God can do, because God can work through you, and God can work with you, and God can work in you, and God can speak to you. You just need to listen. You just need him to want. You just need to want to with all that you are. And I know too many people that God has spoken to and they have heard his voice. Now, I don't tell you to run off and be some kook or fruit or whatever you might want to be. Some coconut, you know, just lying there to be, you know, cracked open. But I'm saying it is a truth and it is a fact. Because Jesus said it. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. He didn't say my sheep read my voice and they know me. He said my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. So God will speak and meet you where you're at today. And you may go up the mountain a little ways and begin to understand about reading your Bible as part of hearing him and programming your mind as you meditate on him and listening to praise music as you consider him and dwelling on his word as you walk on the way and as you think of the law of the Lord that you meditate on it day and night when thou risest up and sittest down when thou travelest on the way and when you do anything in every way that you ever can think of and all imagine that you ever will do <laughs> but the fact is your goal is the mountaintop and when you get there <laughs> God's there Moses saw it so can you don't be satisfied Go up the mountain. You will be blessed.